Good morning, Orchard Lake Community Church, Presbyterian, friends, family, people of God. Welcome to worship this 29th day of March 2020. We welcome all those who have found us um, online via our Facebook page or website or perhaps a shared video from friend to friend or family member to family member. We are excited that we have this opportunity to come to worship with you this morning um, on our Lenten journey. We find ourselves um, in our homes, as you know, trying to have appropriate distance from one another so that um, our world, our towns, our cities, our communities can heal from um, what is going on in the world right now. We remind you that um, in the days and weeks ahead, if you are in need, myself, Linda Cochran, Pastor Linda Cochran, or uh, Pastor Paul Thwaite, or our parish nurse are available to um, assist you or give you guidance, or just let us know that you are in need and, and we will see what we can do. So as a church community, as a church family, I know that um, in talking to many of you, that we have been reaching out to one another and um, checking on each other. And that is just a profound um, statement of being the hands and feet of Jesus. So we welcome you to worship this morning, and um, as we prepare to worship, let us bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Loving and creator God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks that though our world seems a bit upside down right now, that we can find hope in you, that we have faith in um, your son, Jesus, and that we can be together as a community and support one another through the days that are um, uncomfortable and difficult. Be with us this morning as we worship you, that our hearts and minds will be open to your spirit and we may be moved and changed in ways we cannot even know because you are a creative and wonderful and awesome God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, let us begin our worship this morning with our call to worship. This is Psalm 34, verses 1 through 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes it boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Friends, let us come before our great God with our prayer of confession, a God who loves us and is ever present with us. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are living in anxious times. Our daily lives have been changed significantly and our concerns for those impacted by viruses, loss of income, suspension of school and work routines and other changes are very real. Yet in all this, we know you are walking with us through these days. As we continue our Lenten journey, we recall what you faced in those days as you set your face towards Jerusalem. Rejection by your closest friends, physical and mental anguish, being forsaken on the cross as you bore our sins for us. You know and understand what we are feeling and experiencing in these days. Forgive our failure to fully trust in your love and care for us during this time. Forgive the ways in which we have allowed our anxiety and worry to lead us to respond to others inappropriately. Call us into your presence daily, Lord, that we might be filled with your peace and your presence as we live through these days. Now hear our silent prayers of confession. Friends, Jesus loves us deeply because of Jesus' life and death and all of his ministry that we have learned about over the days of our lives. We know that God's presence is working through the Holy Spirit in all we say and do. Because of Jesus' great love for us, we are forgiven through Jesus Christ. Amen. 
and amen. This morning, we have two scripture readings. The first one is from Isaiah. And in Isaiah, we have the prophet predicting um, Jesus, the suffering servant, coming in the future days. So here now, our reading from Isaiah, which is chapter 53, verses 4 through 10. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days through him. The will of the Lord shall prosper. And friends, hear from the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 28 through 34. Hear now the word of God. When he came to the other side to the country of the Gadaradines, two demonics coming out of the tomb met him. They were so fierce that no one could pass that way. Suddenly they shouted, What have you to do with us, son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a large herd of swine was feeding at some distance from them. The demons begged him, If you cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and entered the swine, and suddenly the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and perished in the water. The swine herds ran off, and on going into the town, they told the whole story about what had happened to the demonics. Then the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their neighborhood. Friends, this is the word of God. Thanks be to our Lord and Savior for this word. At this time, we can come together with wonderful music that will be offered this morning. I'm glad that we could join you in worship today. Um, when Israel was in exile, their captors said, Sing us the songs of Zion. And they looked up and said, How can we sing the songs of the Lord in a foreign land? Sometimes right now I feel like we're in exile a little bit too. But earlier in the Psalms, we read this Psalm, uh, Psalm 103. This is from the Message, message Translation. Um, Let's see if this encourages our hearts. Oh, my soul, bless God from head to toe. I will bless his holy name. Oh, my soul, bless God. Don't forget a single blessing. He forgives your sins, everyone. He heals your diseases, everyone. He redeems you from hell, saves your life. He crowns you with love and mercy, a paradise crown. He wraps you in goodness beauty eternal. He restores your youth. You're always young in his presence. God makes everything come out right. I hope that encourages your heart and that you will be able to sing with us. We're going to sing two old hymns of the faith, Great is Thy Faithfulness and To God Be the Glory. <laughs>
Our sermon text for this morning is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 38 to 44. In this passage, Jesus has been invited to return to the little town of Bethany near Jerusalem because his friend Lazarus has taken ill. Mary and Martha, his sisters, have asked Jesus to return, and after several days he does, but by the time he returns, Lazarus has already died and been buried. The sisters invite Jesus to the tomb, and that's where we pick up the story in John chapter 11, verse 38. Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of Lazarus, said to Jesus, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to Martha, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When Jesus had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind them and let him go. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, everyone, and again, welcome to our video worship for March 29th. Uh, wherever you're watching or listening today, we're uh, glad to be able to connect in this way. I'm coming to you again from our family room here on High Ridge Road in West Bloomfield. As we all know, the governor uh, on Monday issued a stay home, stay safe order uh, that we're all uh, seeking to follow to uh, mitigate the spread of the coronavirus. Uh, that order goes through uh, April 12th, which of course is Easter Sunday. So we're <clears throat> grieving the loss of our gathering together through this later Lenten season and into Holy Week and Good Friday. Of course, the community service has been suspended as well, but we continue to connect and gather uh, in this format and uh, worship the Lord together and connect with each other as a family of faith. I hope you're all doing well and continuing to um, do well. Uh, we will continue to post these video worship experiences and other announcements over these next few weeks. Continue to connect with us. And also, as you go to the website to connect uh, with these video offerings, you also see there a Give Online tab. Uh, we encourage and thank you for your generosity through this time as well, and our preference would be to use that online giving format to be able to give via credit card or checking or savings account. Um, we're only checking the mail a couple times a week, uh, so that's the preferred way of uh, donating through this time. Uh, we appreciate that. The session met by video this week and affirmed their intention to continue compensating our staff through this time as they continue to work at home and also uh, continuing to pay our fixed expenses and our mission uh, benevolence support for those that depend on that as well. So thanks for remembering those things as we uh, move into our time of worship now. Uh, let's pray together. Hopefully you uh, printed out uh, or saw on the website a copy of the order of worship that you can follow along with as we uh, share together today. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are grateful for your love and your faithfulness. We've heard those two great hymns. And we recognize that great is your faithfulness. You are the same yesterday and today and forever. There's no shadow of turning with you. And Lord, we thank you too uh, that we have the opportunity to glorify you. Um, to you be the glory in our time of worship today, Lord. We pray that your Holy Spirit would now speak to us through your word. Breathe life into that word, Lord, and breathe that word into our lives as we continue to worship and serve you as your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So we continue in our Latin journey, uh, the theme, Everything Can Change in 40 Days, again, using uh, Gene Watson's book as a guide, and also passages of scripture that um, parallel her writings. 
And this week we've read and heard already one of the great, great, powerful accounts of Jesus' ministry, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Uh, the other evening, Jan and I sat down and watched uh, the movie Dead Man Walking. You may remember it, a movie uh, back a number of years ago. It was based on the true story of Sister Helen Pergine, who connected with and began to counsel a death row inmate in Louisiana who had committed uh, some terrible murders. And she seeks to counsel him and help him understand uh, the importance of coming to grips with what he had done and seeking forgiveness and seeking reconciliation. She accompanies him all the way uh, to the execution room, walking with him as the guards uh, cry out, dead man walking. And Sister Jean has her hand on his shoulder as he marches from life to death, chained and shackled because of his sin, because of his crimes. That's one story of a dead man walking, but the Lazarus story in our scriptures today is another story of a dead man walking, but this time it's a dead man walking from death into new life in Jesus Christ. Through Christ, Lazarus, who had been dead four days in the tomb, uh, was called out, Lazarus, come out. And he comes walking out of the grave, walking out of death into the new life offered by Jesus Christ. And as he does, he's still bound up in the grave clothes, in the clothing around his head and in his uh, body. Uh, you can see a picture of that in the bulletin if you look at that. Uh, but Lazarus is still clothed in the clothing of death, even as he begins to walk into new life. And for me, that was a powerful image for us in this Lenten season of the journey of transformation that we've been talking about that we're talking about a journey of transformation for us as believers from, from death, from being dead in our sins and our trespasses, and God calling us forth into a new life in Jesus Christ. That's what the book of Ephesians reminds us when Paul writes and says, we were dead through the trespasses and sins in which we once lived. God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved through faith, and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Each one of us, as a believer, a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ, is a, a dead person walking, a dead man, a dead woman, a, a dead <coughs> individual been given new life in and through Jesus Christ. As that great Isaiah reading that was a part of our service today reminds us, Jesus Christ took on himself the shackles and chains of our sin, and he took the punishment that we deserve to have so that he might bring forth many offspring, so that he might see many people um, brought from death to life, just as Lazarus was. And in doing that, Jesus wants to see us transformed he wants to see us unwrap and take off that clothing uh, of the old life, of the life of death, of the life of selfishness and self-centeredness, of the life apart from God. And he wants to see us take off that clothing and begin to wrap ourselves and put on the clothing and the garments that represent our new life in and through Jesus Christ. And that's the transformation process that we've been talking about throughout this Lenten season. Now, that transformation isn't always welcomed or received, as we saw in our New Testament reading in Matthew 8, when the Gadarene demoniac was healed by Jesus and set free when he was brought to from death to life. Um, he wasn't uh, always received. The community didn't um, receive him very well. In fact, they came to Jesus and said, you know what? We'd rather have you leave our neighborhood. Um, he was the one who came and was given that new life in Jesus Christ, but not everybody was willing and ready to see that and accept that. But in and through Jesus Christ, the good news for us is that we are given that chance um, to walk from death into new life in and through Christ and take off those garments of the old life and put on the garments of the new life. And that's really what Gene's chapters this week, I think, uh, captured for us so well. For those of you that are following along and reading in her book, we were reading chapters 23 to 28 this week. And she had some wonderful stories uh, in these chapters about some of her different encounters and different experiences as she's singing and traveling the world and uh, ministering and serving the Lord. 
And I think she captured well for us the, the images and pictures of some of those characteristics of the new life that we're called to clothe ourselves in through Jesus Christ as his disciples, as his followers. Um, she began by telling the wonderful story of being in Ireland and going to a, going to a red light district. And in that red light district, um, having a picture in her mind of a woman who she felt um, God was calling her to minister to. And that woman appeared across the street and she went and talked with her and prayed with her and saw her and expressed mercy and care to her. Instead of, she said, a spirit of judgment by just looking at her outward appearance, which of course, um, as, a, as a prostitute, was awful. Uh, that clothing of new life leads us to lay aside the clothing of judgment that we so often get caught up in as human beings, looking at others based on their outward appearance. Um, and we put on the new clothing of mercy in and through our Lord Jesus Christ. She told the wonderful story, Jean did as well, of uh, this little girl coming up to her on a train when she was riding in Ireland and asking her if she was from America. And I don't know about you, but sometimes if I'm riding on a plane or, or, or somewhere else in a bus or something like that, I kind of want to kind of put myself in a shell and, and not really maybe respond to those around me. But Jean um, reached out and began to respond and share and show this little girl pictures in America. She didn't respond with apathy. She didn't respond with unconcern or feeling like she was being bothered. She responded with love. And that love is an example of the new garment that we're called to put on in and through Jesus Christ. And Jean gives us a wonderful example of that. Um, Jean also responded um, to others with comfort, offering comfort to a to a man who she interacted with um, as he experienced the death of his sister from a drug overdose and she happened to show up and get gas at the gas station. And she was able to offer comfort um, to this individual. In another situation, she um, stopped to buy some fruit at the roadside stand and was able to sit down and talk with this man and just in kindness and care, um, treat him not just as a store owner, not just as a person selling some things, but but as someone who was deserving of kindness and love and respect. Uh, Jean tells one of the stories that really struck me when she tells the story of um, being at a concert and singing at a, a service when she was at a church in England. And, and Jean acknowledged that one of the things we all struggle with is this um, human desire to want to be recognized, a, a, a prideful uh, desire to have ourselves noticed and recognized. And she tells the story of coming out of this service. And as she came out, um, this man came up to her and said, I have a word from you from the Lord. And the man told her, as she said, all right, share that with me. The man said, God used a donkey and a goat in scripture he doesn't need you, or a donkey and a fish. And Jean said she was stunned, taken aback, as I would have been if someone had shared that with me after a time of ministry. But Jean realized that <clears throat> to put off the, the garments, the old life of, of pride and, and self-recognition and put on the garments of humility is an important part of our transformation in Jesus Christ. Um, and then she talked about faithfulness. She talked about being faithful in the little things in life. Uh, she was talking about washing dishes and seeing that as a way even then that she can offer her praise and glory to the Lord while she's uh, doing that simple task as well. So these were amazing, amazing stories that Jean shared in her book this week. And all of them, I think, captured this picture, this idea that we're to be people who are walking from the attitudes and the actions that represent death and represent our life apart from God and being transformed into the likeness and image of Jesus Christ, putting on, putting on the garments of Christ, putting on the garments of mercy and of love and of comfort and of kindness and humility and faithfulness. And my gosh, how much are those things needed right now uh, in the midst of these circumstances in our lives? I think one of the things I've read and seen online, of course, is as we're all isolating at home and kids are home from school and people are at home from their jobs and people are trying to balance uh, doing school with kids in the house and perhaps uh, adults are, are working from home trying to uh, continue to attend to their jobs. 
and all staying in the same close space together pretty much all day long, which is not what we're used to, that it's very easy to begin to get a little bit aggravated, a little bit uh, short with one another, a little bit um, frustrated with that situation. And so this is a wonderful reminder um, of God's call for us to be clothed in Christ, in the attitudes toward one another, in our families and in our close relationships, where we treat each other with mercy and with respect, with dignity, with humility, where we're faithful to one another and caring for each other um, through these challenging times, uh, and where we evidence um, the, the life of Christ being um, shared with us, being worn and shared with us uh, and by us. Um, what a wonderful opportunity it is as we interact with other people, uh, perhaps that we um, connect with through video conferencing or through other means of social media in these days, um, to express thoughts and words of, of mercy and of concern and of comfort, to check in and ask how people are doing, um, to take concern for our neighbors and our friends, especially those uh, we know that um, may be older or may be in a situation where uh, they might struggle through a time like this. Um, not just to get wrapped up as much of the world does in, in our own needs, our own concerns, our own frustrations, but to really have a heart for others and have a heart of mercy and care for one another as we navigate um, these days. And as we pray for those who are um, battling this virus, who are sick or ill, and those who are treating and caring for them, the people in the medical field, the nurses, the doctors, the um, lab technicians, the other folks who are on the front lines of this and risking their own health as they do this, how important it is uh, for us to remember them and give thanks for them. So my hope and prayer for us is this story of Lazarus, this dead man walking from death into new life, a reminder of the privilege we have, of the calling we have, of the journey we're involved in, of putting aside the clothes of death, the clothes of selfishness, uh, the clothes of the old life, and putting on and being clothed in the garments of new life and of righteousness in Jesus Christ. My hope and prayer for all of us is that we will reflect on that and, and pray for and seek God's um, guidance and power through the Holy Spirit to be able um, to put on those new garments in Jesus Christ and to shine the light of Christ uh, out into our world, especially in these days of such a challenge. Lord, we pray that you will allow us uh, to be like Lazarus, uh, dead people walking, people who have been given the gift of salvation, who have been given the gift of new life in Christ, and who in your mercy, O oh God, have been brought from death to life. Um, fill us with your power, fill us with your spirit, that we might put on those garments of mercy and kindness and love and humility and faithfulness during these days. Do that by your spirit, we pray, so that you may be honored and glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. As we lift up our prayers today, again, uh, listed in the bulletin uh, are the names of those uh, who we want to be lifting up and remembering in prayer. <clears throat> I wanted to call special attention to the notice we had this week of the death of Frederick Anthony Grazik. Uh, who had been a member here, um, he and his wife, they now live in Florida, but they have connections here in our congregation with the Daly and the Hatcher families. So we're praying for those families as they uh, grieve his death. Um, of course, all those involved in the outbreak, um, the others who are continuing the battle illness. Uh, we've had special requests for prayers for Luann LaViolette's uh, brother, Don, who just had heart surgery and is in recovery from that. And also Dora Spearstad, who has had a liver transplant and is still uh, dealing with complications from that. Um, we also got word uh, this week of a suicide of a young man uh, in Wald Lake Northern High School. And uh, several families and young people in our congregation uh, have been good friends with this individual. So that's been a very difficult, difficult journey for them as well. Um, so we continue to lift up uh, these individuals in our prayers. <clears throat> Let us join together in prayer now as God's people. Gracious God, we know that you know the needs and concerns of our hearts. We know that you are with us in all times and in all situations. And so, Lord, as we journey through these unique uh, days, these days of um, isolation, these days of awareness of and anxiousness about uh, a virus that is afflicting and uh, 
<clears throat> troubling many people that has caused uh, many um, to uh, be in the hospital and uh, has even brought about many deaths uh, in our state and in our nation and in our world. Lord, we pray for you uh, to be present in each of these places where people are grieving and hurting. Lord, we pray for wisdom <clears throat> for those who are seeking to fight this and uh, that they would make wise decisions, be with our civic leaders, our community and state and national and world leaders as they wrestle with ways to battle this. Uh, grant them your wisdom, Lord, grant them your guidance. Help them to work together for the good of the larger group and of our larger communities. Lord, we do pray for health workers and pray for your special protection for them, for first responders, for those who are out in the community and have to be um, responding to and caring for these individuals who are battling this virus. Lord, protect them and bless them and be with them as well. Lord, we pray for the Grasic family grieving the death that has happened this past week. May your comfort and your strength and your presence be with them. Uh, be with Luann's brother. We pray for a steady healing and recovery for him from his heart surgery and for Dora. Spear status, she continues uh, to <clears throat> journey through a situation with a liver transplant. We pray for wisdom, for doctors, uh, for her as well. And Lord, you know, each of our families, each of our circles of friends has our own special concerns. We thank you, Lord, that uh, in our congregation, it seems people are healthy and well for the most part, um, looking out for each other, caring for each other, checking on one another. Lord, help us to continue to do that uh, in the days and weeks that lie ahead. And Lord, as we go through this time where there is so much uncertainty and so much anxiousness and so much <clears throat> uh, ability uh, and cause for worry, we pray that you will remind us again of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. That even as we walk through difficult times, Lord, the <clears throat> presence of the Lord is with us. Um, that you have called us by name and that we are yours and that you will never leave us or forsake us. So Lord, hear these concerns as well as the personal <clears throat> individual concerns we each have. We offer them all to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, be well, stay healthy. <coughs> Excuse me, continue to let us know if there are any needs or concerns. Our phone numbers are in the printed uh, bulletin that was online. <clears throat> so don't hesitate to call. God bless, stay well, stay safe and healthy. The Lord be with you. <clears throat>